if your business is really stressing you out right now because you don't have any predictability, you don't know what to expect next month, your revenue is boom and bust cycles, and you really just don't know what's working and what isn't, the best way to solve this problem is by using a KPI tracker and to actually track your numbers. So what the hell is a KPI? Well, it's a key performance indicator. This basically allows you to get numbers and data as to different aspects of your business and see what's working and what isn't. And now moving forward, you can make decisions based on the actual numbers instead of how you feel today. So I'm gonna walk you through exactly what my master tracker looks like, how I approach it, and how it's able to allow me to make those smart decisions when it comes to my business and evaluating what's working and what isn't so I can move forward in the best way possible. So let's dive right in. This is what my master tracker looks like. So you can see that basically it breaks down into my audience, which is gonna be my top of funnel, setting, which is basically going to be getting people from a warm audience closer to the actual sales process, which is typically booking a call. And then once we have them on the call, how qualified are they? And then the actual money making part. Okay, so I'm gonna break everything down. But basically, as you'll see throughout this video, I'm able to actually really track the numbers, see what isn't working and what is, and then I can basically make adjustments inside of my marketing, inside of my funnel, to then get everything moving a little bit better. So when it moves basically through the funnel right here, you'll see that you basically go, again, top of funnel, all the way down as we progress. And so here, at the beginning, we're just getting people inside. We're building the audience, okay? So people are just moving inside, so what do we track at this level right here? Well, I'm gonna track exactly how many new followers I'm getting. So these are new people that are coming into my world that don't know me, that are just now starting to follow my content. And then I'm gonna track how many of them are qualified, meaning that they're actually going to be my target demographic that I'm looking to work with. So in our case, we wanna work with online coaches. Thankfully, they're very easy to target because I can see right on their profile, whether, they not, whether or not they have the actual I help statement, if they got a link in their bio, if they got different things with the lead magnet, what have you, if they have some content. If anyone's got something like that, well, they're most likely qualified for my program. And so I would be able to mark them off as qualified. And the reason this is important is because now I can track as a percentage based how many people are coming into my funnel that are actually qualified. So let's say, for example, that, you know, last month, maybe I have, I got 300 new followers and then maybe let's say 120 of them were qualified. Okay. So in this case, I have a 40% new follower to quality percentage. So then once I start to have these percentage numbers and, and the costs, I can figure out, is that actually good or not? And if it's good, great. Whatever I'm doing right now is working. Let's either ramp it up or just maintain. If it isn't, there's some kind of issue going on. So in this case right here, if I'm on the very first step, I'm working on my audience. If it's working, great. I have perfect ads. I have really good content. Everything's working together. But if I'm not, if I'm in the lower trenches here, if I'm getting less than 10%. As you can see, I have different data points that I'm shooting for. If I'm below 10%, that means that I'm most likely not calling out my avatar very well. Maybe my content that I'm using inside of my ads just isn't resonating with people. Maybe I'm just not pushing away the wrong fit and I have too many random people hopping into my funnel or into my profile. So I basically have something that's not working. And so if I have a marketing plan running right now and I'm getting everything else working, I'm getting really good scripts, I'm getting people to book calls, I'm hopping on the call, but I'm just not closing deals. If I don't track my KPIs, I would know what's working and what isn't. But in this case, let's say that, for example, out of my new followers, I got maybe 20 that were, that were actually quality fit. Well, maybe I'm getting everything else right. Maybe I'm really pushing hard to get calls booked and everything, but I'm not closing any deals. Well, if I'm not closing any deals, it's because I'm most likely not talking to the right people. And that's because I have very low quality followers that are coming into my funnel. You, you can't fix the back if the front isn't working. If I'm not bringing good people into the funnel, it doesn't matter how many calls I book because they're not going to be qualified anyways, right? And so that's why it's really important for me to figure out exactly what's working and what isn't. So if I have a lot of good quality leads coming in, 
now that's a good thing that I can then either ramp up my ad spend or I can just maintain my ads and focus on the rest now. Okay, so that's the first part with the audience. I want to have ideally over 30%. Okay, so with our marketing, we typically run top of funnel follower ads. So we're just encouraging people to basically follow our profile because whenever I do my marketing, our goal is to basically grow the audience. It's a little bit more of a long-term play, but as you grow your audience, you're going to nurture them with content and eventually you're basically going to sell them before you actually go for the sale. So I like this type of marketing. If you do have a different type of marketing, and so for example, if your cold audience conversion is through a VSL ad, you might not be focusing too much on your followers because basically you're running an ad that goes straight to a link to book a call. So you might be optimizing for cost per click, for example, or opt-ins, okay? So that'd be one. If you're doing DM ads, cold audience, we like running DM ads as well, but more as a phase two or phase three as part of your marketing, which means that basically it's not a very cold person. It's someone that already follows you. And then we're going to basically encourage them to take more steps with DM ads. But if you're doing cold audience DM ads, then you'd probably be optimizing for somewhat similar new messages and then quality messages. So are the people messaging you actually qualified or not? So that's how you can basically kind of change this KPI tracker a little bit, depending on what you're actually running in your marketing and, and how you actually go about it. But we focus on followers. So that's what we're optimizing for. I want to get people into my ecosystem, sell them inside of my marketing and through my content, get them wins for free. And then the sales process becomes a lot easier. So we're optimizing for that. So that's why you'll see the KPI tracker is adapted this way. And so if your strategy is different, hopefully this can basically help you know how I go about this and then you can adapt it. So new followers, quality followers. Okay, let's see we're at this number. Great, we got it dialed in. Next, part of my marketing is that I basically want to have people move themselves through the funnel without me having to actually reach out to anyone. I really want this to be like a no sales pressure type of marketing. And so people are basically going through my content, they're winning, they're reaching out. And so with this, I'm going to be basically tracking how many people are reaching out to us now. So middle of funnel, we have DM ads, and we also have straight to link ads as well. So my inbound messages are going to be most likely encourage them to reach out if they want to learn more about the program, or if they want access to a free resource I had in the form of a lead magnet or my free course that I have. So now I'm going to be tracking inbound messages and opt-ins. So, and we'll just say we're spending some money right now. You are spending $1,500. Okay. So now I'm going to be tracking the, that's per month right here. I'm on the, the master tracker one. And then basically this all breaks down into month by month. And so let's say for example, you're in January, you can basically break this down day by day, but now I'm just on the, the monthly one. So next we track inbound messages. So maybe I get 40 messages, 51 opt-ins throughout the entire month. So for this, this is our cost per connection. So how much does it cost me to get someone to raise their hand, basically wanting to learn more about something I have? Because someone that's reaching out is going to be a little bit warmer than someone that just decided to follow, right? So they're basically, again, moving themselves down the pipeline. So we had people coming in with our ads. Okay, we're optimizing here. And now we're, we're, we got people moving on to basically phase two, which is basically them nurture, getting nurtured. So with this, now we have people sending us messages, they have people opting in. Okay, so now you wanna basically make sure we get people through at the cheapest cost possible. So now we want this number to be as low as possible. All the cost ones are, are, are wanting, we want them to be low. So in this case, I also have different numbers as well. So I get really low cost per message and our cost per click on the direct to link are really, really good. We get it for like around 30 cents per click, which is awesome. And so we're doubted on this ourselves. And then the message, I believe we're around maybe $6 per message. That's for retargeting. And so usually retargeting, it could be a little bit higher, which is why I have in this trench of seven to 15 but we really have it dialed in right now. But let's say that at this point, this is our cost per connection. So at this rate right now, if this was how my KPIs kind of came out for this month, okay, 
I'm really dialed in on the audience on the top of funnel. This is great. But now something is lacking inside of my nurture process. So either my content just isn't resonating. Maybe they don't really want my free digital assets that I'm offering in the form of that lead magnet or free course. Maybe the lead magnet subject is just something they don't care about. Okay. The lead magnet ideally want to be something that's really attractive to them that gives them a reason to basically reach out, raise their hand and, and contact you. So in this case, if my cost per connection is really high, I either have bad ads, I have poor lead magnet free course in the form of I basically have bad resource that people don't want. So now if I was here, I would have to really figure out exactly where am I lacking? Because in this case, my cost per connection is really high. So again, we can start to see what's working and not inside of the business because we're starting to use numbers. So now I can see, okay, my top of funnel, my audience building, these ads are great. I'm not going to touch this. This is working at its, as itself. We're good. But now as we're moving down the funnel, this part, however, isn't working right now. Okay. We're getting cost per connections, but it should be a lot cheaper. I should be getting more people reaching out. So now I need to figure out whether my digital assets are not that great, people don't care about them, or is it just my ads that are poor? So now I'd be focusing on this, okay? So that's how you think about that. And then the next part is obviously having that sales conversation. So thankfully throughout this entire process, people are watching your content, they're getting a lot of value, hopefully they're getting some wins for free. And now they're reaching out, wanting to learn more about your program, and so you're sending the link to, to book a call. And so now we're also going to optimize how many calls we're actually booking and how much it costs us. So let's say, for example, that we are booking maybe 10 calls. We're booking 10 calls. There we go. Add the formula backwards. So with this, now I can see exactly how much does it cost me to get one call booked. So similar to right here. If you have these KPIs, we're on an overall monthly number as well. So let's say that, you know, if I was doing January, I'd be tracking, you know, I got one follower here, I got four here, three, 12, 42, whatever, right? And then as a whole, I'd be able to see, okay, I got 50 right here. Yeah, I'm tracking it day by day. Okay, opt-ins, calls booked, one, two, right? So basically day by day, things are going to fluctuate then as you come back here, we'll see as an overall metric, how much is it costing me to get these results? So at a higher level, this is a little bit better to see because some days obviously you'll have really great days and some are just slower, just is how it is. But overall, I can start to see, okay, on an average, this past month, it cost me $16.50 to get someone to raise their hand and reach out to me. So every single time I spend $16, I should expect someone to reach out Obviously, maybe one day I got, it might cost me $8 to get two, but then the next day I might get, you know, zero or something. So it's usually an average. And then for cost per call booked, every single time I spend about $150, I'm booking a call. So for call books, usually here, if you're under $100, that's great. If you're between $100 to $200, that's okay. That's okay. And then over $200, it's, it's not that good. All right. So right here, I'm like towards the middle. So it could be better. It could be worse. So right here, if this is what my, my KPIs look like at the time, then what I really need to focus on is, is this number right here. Because if I can improve this number, this will probably also improve my cost per booked call because I'm having more conversations with people. Okay. So if this is my business at the moment, again, I can start to get a pulse on what's working and what isn't. So in this case, this is very good. This is okay. But this is probably the, the most lacking indicator. All right. So then I'd be focusing on this. Then we continue. So we booked 10 calls. Maybe we had, you know, two no shows. We took eights and then we offered for fifth for four people. So 50%. Okay. So in this case, no shows. So we had 10 total calls two no shows. That'd be about 80%. Okay. So I'm like about in the middle. So that's okay. Offers quality rate. I'm only, I'm talking to eight people, but I'm only offering to four, meaning that four of them were qualified. So I'm at 50% qualified right here. This is a very low number. 
This means that I'm talking to people and booking calls with people that aren't qualified. So if you're early on in your business, you could be a little bit more lenient on who you actually hop on a call with because you just need to get some reps, you need to improve your sales process or your sales in general, your sales skills, your, your framing and the script. So you could maybe hop on more calls, but ideally, if you're really low on this number, you're doing something wrong when it comes to either the qualification process inside of the DMs. You should be qualifying the lead a little bit more. It could be down to the actual application. Maybe you should be a little bit more strict on the application questions and what you allow to then book the call. For us, for example, we have them go through the application and if it's a good fit, they will land on the booking page. If they're not, they get kicked off of the funnel and they get pushed towards my free course because they can still get some wins over there. They can grow their business to then become a good fit client. That's why I had the free course there. But basically, in this case, we're lacking on the offer section. So now we're talking to bad fit qualified leads. So now I basically need to dial in, okay, I need to be qualifying leads a little bit more. I need to maybe work on my application. Maybe I need to improve my content and have that even more dialed in. Okay, so if I'm getting a little bit stricter here, maybe I end up booking less calls, okay? But then my quality goes way up. In my case, I'd rather hop on less calls with qualified leads so I'm not wasting time versus hopping on a lot of calls that are just wasting time, basically, or just useless. That's what I was optimizing for before. I was basically optimizing for cost per booked call. I wanted to get this number as low as possible. We got it down to like $30 at our peak, but I was booking so many calls, spending a lot of time on Zoom, and it just wasn't really driving that much results. We were just hopping on calls with people that didn't have any money, that weren't qualified. So really the ultimate KPI you want to optimize for is the CAC number, which is the cost to acquire a client. So in this case, for example, we have seven offers. Maybe we get two deals. So let me fix this. So with this, every single time I spend $750, I can acquire a client. So now you're creating predictability inside of your business, basically. You know that whenever I get 10 new followers, four of them should be qualified. Whenever I spend $16, someone's gonna reach out, raise their hand, and ask to learn more, or ask for some kind of resource. Every time I spend 250, I'm booking a call, and every time I spend 750, I'm closing a deal. So if I'm running ads and I wanna close four deals in a month, I just gotta spend $3,000. 750 times four, okay? So now you're creating predictability inside of your business. And because you actually have every part of your funnel broken down by the number, you can also figure out exactly what's working and what isn't. So this is basically how you break down your master tracker. Again, if you were to do this on a more granular level, then you just break everything down day by day. You then just grab the numbers at the bottom and then send it back here so you can have a month per month then I also use this right here so I can actually track it as a line chart and see, you know, up and down, hopefully up, right? So that's how you use and create a master tracker. If you want access to my master tracker, comment down below tracker and I'll send it over to you. But otherwise, I hope this video helps you out. Let me know if you have any questions. Be sure to subscribe and follow so you can learn more things just like this about how to grow your business and scale. Otherwise, thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.